How to start a business and how to build a successful business. How to build a successful business. Starting a business and becoming successful is often part of the American dream. But there is a difference between starting a business and building a successful business. Many businesses fail within the first few years of existence due to the lack of planning for the long term. There is not enough vision and there is not enough done to strengthen the business properly from the ground up. Before we continue remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to start a business there is an easy way to get a better understanding of why some businesses fail and others don't. When starting a business think about it similar to building a house. If done right it is protecting you against any kind of storm or danger of the outside world and will last for a long time. It offers shelter and protection. For you and your business that could be translated to what you want to have a business that is able to weather economical ups and downs, equals storm, and that will provide income to pay the bills, shelter and protection. When building a house there are several different steps you need to follow to have the house built. You know you want a house, but you got to pick a location and get an architect to plan everything out. In the business world that would be, you know you want to start a business, but you have to come up with a business idea and work out a business plan. The next thing for the house would be to build the foundation, and eventually the basement, for the house. In the business world, you got to build the initial infrastructure, example, connecting with vendors, find a manufacturer for your product, create a sales team, rent office space, get a delivery truck, etc. Once that is in place you able to actually do business and earn some money. But you are not completely done yet. You need to build a frame, put in windows and you also need a roof on house. For your business this means that you pay off debt, improve business processes and get professional help when needed, example, find a tax accountant, select a payroll service, etc. Once the house is built you probably want to fill it with furniture and make it livable for the future. Nobody wants to sleep on the floor, right? Again translating this to the business world it could mean that you invest money you earn back into your business. You buy machinery instead of leasing it. Eventually you buy a building, hire more staff, develop more products, move into new markets, build up a high cash reserve, and buy other businesses and so forth. This is often the step where winners and losers separate. Reinvesting money into the business is a key factor for success. If you go and spend all the money on your own salary to buy things you have nothing to go back to when the economy slips into a recession or if disaster strikes. The successful business owner has built up a cash reserve or can borrow money from banks securing loans with the assets of the business. Going back to building a house this pretty much matches the same efforts. You pay off your mortgage and have equity available to eventually borrow against when an emergency arises. Emergencies do not include paying off credit cards to use them again or to buy a car. Financially responsible you should be looking. Can a successful online business be started with $100 or less? The internet has become a great advantage for many people wanting to start their own business as there are no longer heavy costs involved with starting an online business and one can easily be established for under $100. Your primary costs for any online business will probably be your domain name and hosting. The primary costs of an online business will probably be your domain name and hosting fees. Domain names can be bought relatively cheaply, under $20, and hosting fees can be decided bearing in your mind your budget. There are free hosts if you really cannot afford more but it is generally better to go for a paid hosting service, and these start from only a few dollars. It is understandable that when starting a new business you want to cut costs. However, always weigh the pros and cons. Some costs can be minimized but some can't for reasons of quality. There are many free, yet effective ways to promote your online business. One of the greatest advantages for starting an online business on a tight budget is that, unlike many offline marketing methods, many online marketing methods are free but just as, if not more, effective than paid advertising. Search engine optimization, for example, is the best way to market your website and there are many free tutorials available on the internet which will help you to optimize your website yourself. Marketing is another powerful but free marketing method. This means that you can have an effective marketing campaign for free. Sourcing products for your business is free or very low cost. 
there are a number of ways that you can source products for free or a low fee as well, depending on your budget and what you want to do. Many affiliate programs are free to join, so you can start promoting their products with just the cost of your domain name and host and get free products and free advertising. Dropship companies are another way of sourcing products for your business. They may have a membership fee to belong to them but customers will pay you for the products before you pass the money on to the dropship company. Payment processors are free and take a percentage after sales. In general, the payment processors that you use will also be free to join and will just take their cut after you have made the sale and the money comes through. This means that there are no upfront costs associated with payment processors. If you decide to go for your own merchant account then it could become more costly but this is not necessary. To begin with, most websites use PayPal as their payment processor and this is free to join. The internet has made it easy to start a successful online business for under $100 as your primary costs will probably be your domain name registration and hosting and this can cost only a few dollars, while many products, marketing methods, and payment processors can be got for free. 4 Key Questions You Must Ask Are you ready to start your own business? Every year millions of people answer yes to that question and every year that answer costs many of them money, time, confidence, and heartbreak. The Small Business Administration estimates there are 580,900 new small businesses opening each year and that number does not include the small one-person entrepreneurships that pop up every day. However even if you are your business's sole employee then there is still something to be learned from the SBA's numbers. According to the SBA, two-thirds of new businesses survive at least two years and 44% survive at least four years. Two of the key factors in the business's survival and ability to thrive the owner's education level and the owner's reason for starting the firm in the first place. How can you make sure that you are among the winners rather than the losers in this high-stakes game? The answer is inside of you. You must ask yourself four key questions to determine whether your own small business will survive and thrive. 1. Are you ready? Have you mentally prepared yourself for the switch from the employee, or student or whatever label fits you currently, to boss? You are going to be the one making decisions now about everything from office products to product line. This total control is one of the driving forces behind many people who take the plunge into starting their own business but it is also one of the elements that drive new entrepreneurs crazy. When you start out there is an endless list of decisions that need to be made and new questions crop up every day. Even more important you will need to remember that in a small business you will wear many hats. Even if you manage to start out with one or more employees you will each fulfill more than one role in your new business. And if you are running a one-man or one-woman show then you serve in every capacity from file clerk to maintenance crew to salesman to CEO. Can you handle switching from task to task and role to role like that? Are you willing to make those switches? Similarly, have you prepared your family and friends for this switch in attitude? Your life is going to change, probably pretty drastically and that change can have a positive or negative impact on your family life and social interactions. It will make things much easier if your friends and family are supportive going into the process. 2. Where is your niche? Have you identified your niche yet? One of the reasons many businesses fail is that they fail to focus on a target audience. Yes if you are a major discount chain then you can sell everything from peanuts to wallpaper but this type of business requires vast resources that just aren't available to the small business. But small businesses dominate the marketplace, creating more than 50% of the private gross domestic product last year, by finding a different approach and niche. Knowing your niche means you are better able to find, target, and maintain your customers as well as provide the best possible goods and services to that customer base. That focus is one of your best chances to not only survive but to thrive in a very competitive marketplace. 3. What is your plan of action? Another key factor in the survival and ultimate success of your business is how much planning you do before you open your electronic or physical doors. You need to decide if your business will be based on the internet or include more traditional models. Are you going to work full-time or part-time at your new business? Are you going to hire help or go solo? Have you written, or at least outlined, your business plan? Dreaming, thinking and planning can save you much trouble and waste later when things are hectic and problems strike. Planning can also help keep you focused and to balance your spending and time. 4. Who are you going to call? At some point, no matter how experienced a business person you are, you will need help. You will need support, advice, tools, or information or all of the above. One of the beautiful, and most frightening, aspects of growth is that it can lead you to places you never imagined. No matter how much planning and experience you bring to your new position as CEO the unexpected will arise. How will you cope with this? It is important to recognize that no business is an island. It is not failure to seek help. 
Failure is when your business shuts down because you didn't get the help you needed. The best way to get timely help is to work on your support system while you work on building your business. That way you will already have a ready list of resources available that you can quickly tap into when emergencies strike. In today's world there are many marvelous resources available to you no matter what your business model may be. These include, publications, newsletters, magazines, books, people, professional advisors, mentors, teachers, consultants, networks, organizations and forums in your niche as well as general business and marketing, education and training, tutorials, courses, and seminars. After you have answered these four key questions you are now ready to ask yourself that one big question again are you ready to start your own business?